What's going on? It's Rick. Rick from CodeWithIntent.com coming at you with another video. And in this one, we're going to be taking a look at DynamoDB on Linux. And I'm going to be sharing with you how you can set up DynamoDB on Linux on your own VPS or your virtual machine or your current machine. Uh, I'll be showing you how to set this up as a daemon, as a service, using some of these handy commands that I wrote here for you. And if you stay tuned all the way to the end of the video, I'll show you an automation script that I put together using a bash script that you can download from GitHub. So let's get into it. Now, before we jump into it here, we start looking at all the commands and all the different options and all of that fun stuff with DynamoDB. Before we do all that here, I just want to give you some preface and give you some understanding here. I don't have 35, 45 minutes to sit here and go through this entire process with you. You know, pull up the terminal, SSH to a machine, you know, do all this fun stuff with you here. Just, it's going to take way too long. Instead of that, instead of doing that, I actually decided to go ahead and just write an automation script that will take care of all this for you. So, you know, instead of, you know, if this video gets a thousand views, and it takes an average 30 to 45 minutes a person to do it. That's, you know, 45 times a thousand. That's a lot of minutes, okay? That's a lot of time people wasting their time. So I decided to put together this blog post. So if you decide to do it manually, you can. I also wrote up a automation script that will go ahead and automate this entire process for you. So you don't have to sit through this process and read this blog post. You can just run the automation script. They'll do the entire thing for you. But I'm not going to talk too much about that here until we get to the end. And I'll talk about that here in a sec. But before we get to that, I want to go ahead and give a summary here for those few that don't know what DynamoDB is. So let's head over to their website over at Amazon and check it out. So Amazon DynamoDB is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service for any scale. Pay only the throughput and storage you need. Now, Amazon DynamoDB is a type of NoSQL database. And if you're not familiar with the NoSQL database, you can check out the channel here. I have a couple of videos here on Redis, Memcache, and MongoDB, and specifically how to use those, those databases to be able to write uh, Node.js applications. So if you're interested in NoSQL databases, maybe check out some of those videos, learn a little bit more about NoSQL databases. They work a little bit different than relational databases, you know, such as using key value pairs, be able to store documents. So there's just a whole entire verbiage that comes along with a NoSQL database. And I don't want to get too much into it here, but I'm assuming if you're looking at DynamoDB, you understand that a NoSQL database has some benefits and some downfalls here. But mostly here for me specifically, I want to use DynamoDB for this one specific reason. Single digit millisecond latency at, at any scale. And it, of course, it's a fully managed cloud database that supports both document key value store models. So really interesting stuff here. So here's some customer case studies that Amazon has. So here's our friends at Snapchat, our friends at Airbnb, Lyft, Tinder, Netflix, Amazon, Adobe, and even Expedia. So if you're interested in as far as like how much scale can it actually reach, check out some of these case studies, go through them, and really understand before you actually decide to start using uh, DynamoDB because if you tightly couple your code with it, it might be difficult to switch to another provider, you know, with, if you go with Google or if you go with an internal database. So be very wise once you actually start to decide if you're actually going to go with DynamoDB or a different database. So use this case studies, understand how to use it. But mostly, you know, you're going to look at some of the benefits like it's fully managed, highly scalable, fast and consistent performance. You can use event driven programming using AWS Lambda. Find great access control with our built-in ACL, and of course, it is flexible, so it supports both document and key value pairs there. That's pretty much just a little summary here on DynamoDB. If you're more interested in that, you know, go check it out over there. They have tons of resources as far as, uh, you know, FAQs, community, developer resources, and how to actually get started with uh, their SDK. So check it out, uh, aws.amazon.com. Back to the tutorial here, and in this tutorial, we have to install DynamoDB on Linux. So we learned about it. Now we have to install the JRE and we have to verify Java is available, download DynamoDB, create a directory, move the jar files and give them the right permissions, create the user that will run the service, create a daemon, 
verify the service is up, and then I lastly talk about the automation script. Here's all the steps. Again, I'm not gonna go through them. They're all here, they're all documented, and there's a link below this video. You can just click on, it'll take you over to the blog post, and it'll show you all the different commands. So they're all there, and you'll be able to run the service as a daemon for your Linux distribution. Now, I'm using a system CTL, settle, settle, this is the new one. I'm usually used to using services, but this is the new way that Ubuntu is using it. So system CTL, I'm not really sure how to say it, but <laughs> yeah, there, it's really difficult to say that word. But anyways, at the end, you'll have a system that you'll be able to, you know, start, stop and see, check the status for it. And I also gave you some handy commands here to tell the system logs and then be able to grab for the listening ports because there might be a conflict with the port that the database listens on. Typically it's port 8000, but it might be different, you know, if you're using port 8000 for something else, so that might conflict. There's a flag you can pass into the, to the actual um, jar file here that will let you change a different port there. But anyways, lastly, I want to go ahead and talk about the GitHub project that I wrote. There's a little automation script that I wrote for you guys. It is this setup sh. And this pretty much goes ahead and automates the entire process that this blog post is talking about. Creating directories, downloading files, deleting files, extracting files, moving files around, you know, writing the right permissions, um, creating users for the service, you know, setting up the service, you know, downloading the the files that are required for you to be able to run it as a service. Again, all of that is found over at GitHub. And to use this script, all you have to do is just go on the command line, download it with this command, and then run it with this sudo sh setup sh. And then I'll take care of everything for you so you don't have to even follow these steps. Just run the script and I'll set it up for you and you'll be ready to go. Now, before I go here, I want to go ahead and share with you a couple things here. Um, if you found this video to be useful, go to the blog, scroll all the way to the top, click products here, RSVP to the webinar. This is a 100% free webinar where I talk about how you can become a full stack developer and you can start using awesome tools like DynamoDB uh, so you can work for companies such as Snapchat, Tinder, the list of available companies that are searching for qualified developers. I mean, the list goes on and on, guys. You can see here, look at this, Netflix, Adobe, Amazon, Lyft, Comcast, Capital One, Expedia, Samsung. If you want to refer to these types of companies, more than likely you're going to need the skills of a full stack developer. So this is why I put together a free, 100% free webinar you can go through and you'll understand the skills you'll need, the technology stacks you need to understand, how to learn any programming language, how to get some guidance for the things you do need to know so when you need to learn a new database, you can easily pick it up without spending weeks and weeks trying to learn it. Again, all of that 100% free. I'll drop you a link below so you can go ahead and register for it. And I'll send you an email once we get started with the webinar, but 100% free, register for it. I'll drop you a link so you can get access to it. All right, so I was gonna go ahead and do it here for me. If you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you click the subscribe button and I'll talk to you next time.